With the frame restoration completed, the first step in our upholstery is to put a webbing foundation to support the springs. I'm going to start on this front rail here. Leave myself a little space beside these legs. Turn that under and put in some shots here. Pull this webbing to the back and I've got a, a scrap of wood here cut in an arc. I'm going to drop a slice of leather in there to protect the finish on the wood. We'll have a flat surface to work with this webbing stretcher. With the strands of webbing run front to back, I'm going to do this side to side and we're going to do them in a basket weave. It's a little more substantial support, evenly dispersed. In most cases, I, I don't like using the original springs over again. Um, in rare cases, if it's a museum piece or something that you really want to conserve them, I will. But in this case, these are really shot. It looks like there's actually three different sizes they use. So we're going to pitch this and uh, start with a whole new, new seat plan. The original spring round only had six springs and it's very hard to get a good balance in your tying and working with it so I'm going to start with a new plan and go to seven springs. We'll add one into this row. When you're building an overstuffed seat there's about a four inch area around the seat, three and a half to four inches where it's uh, stuffed and stitched into place so when we sew our springs in we have to make that allowance. The seat frame measures 23 and a half inches uh, diameter, so allowing for a four inch perimeter for stuffing and stitching, I've made this cardboard template and I've marked out equal placement for each spring. We'll have one in the center. I'll get this all centered in place and chalk in a reference line. I'll start shaping the edge wire by marking center and taking the steel wire and just gently pulling it and working it into uh, the profile of this rail. Okay, now I need to line up my center. I need to make a couple little adjustments in the wire here. Note that this upright isn't placed on the center of the rail. It threw me off early into the project. I'm fastening the edge wire to the frame using some heavy scrap leather. I'm going to tack that in place with 10 ounce tacks. Using a proper spring height can sometimes be pretty challenging. Um, in this case, I need to make a, about a four inch crown on the seat. I want these springs to pull down just below the edge bar. I'll start the springing by placing them around the perimeters on all of my designated marks here. There's a little bend in the spring coil here. This is the top. It's going to get 
pinch together as we tie it. I've got about a 4 yard piece of nylon button cord that I've pulled through a beeswax ball. The beeswax helps eliminate snarling and your knots secure much better. I'll do the stitching with a 3 inch bayonet point needle. I'll start here on this front, front spring. Working from the bottom, I'll hold it in place and pull this through and tie it off. It's a very valuable knot to learn. Pinch the cord from the back, run it around the top, around the back, and back to the top side again, down through that opening. Very handy and tough knot. To tie the spring in place, I'm pushing the needle in from the bottom of the chair, running it over the wire on top here. And as I bring the needle back down, I take the cord from the previous knot and we'll go around that needle twice. And we'll pull it down. Here's where the beeswax really helps reduce snarling. Having all the springs stitched in place to the webbing, I can start pulling these uh, top coils down into basically a crown formation. I'll pull off some of this ruby Italian hemp and allow about an inch for every knot and some extra to grip on to. It's better to have them a little longer than to run yourself short. Start in the center of this back rail with a 10 ounce tack. I'll wrap the cord around it. When I'm pulling these loose spring ends together, I like to uh, add a little beeswax to the cord. It helps cinch the knot tighter and uh, secures it a lot better. I'll push the spring down into the proper height and adjust that spring to where it, I'm looking straight down through the center. And I'll give the rope a pinch and we'll wrap it around. Make our first knot right there. Make sure it's in place and you're looking right down through the center. And we'll pull this seam together right here. back on the cord and sight down through the center of the next spring. Pinch it and come around with your knot. The knot is done by dropping the cord over the top of the wire. And with your finger you can easily push this back. Um, for clarity's sake, this comes back over the top and through there for a nice, neat knot. With these rows of three all tied into place, I'm going to add further ties to level these springs out and run parallel lines from the back to the front. Each one of these coils is pulled down evenly 
at around four and a quarter inches. There's a rip on our spring up. <laughs> 